Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your 2021 April general readings. We're looking at the first two weeks of April, so from the 1st through the 15th. This reading is for the fire sign of Sagittarius. Welcome everyone. I hope you're all safe and well wherever you're at, reasonably sane as we walk through a little bit better of a year than 2020, and it will continuously continue to get better. Continuously continue. <laughs> Um, slow but sure, one step at a time. <clears throat> Thanks for taking the time to tune in today and for all that you do in support of this channel, even if it's nothing more than just tuning in to a video or two or all of the videos. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps. Like, share if you're so inclined. Uh, thanks for all the support, donations, feedback, comments, all greatly welcome and appreciated. Many blessings back to you. So this reading is for Sagittarius, the fire sign of Sagittarius for the first two weeks of April 2021. That's if your sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign is in Sagittarius. It's also relevant if you're cross-watching for a Sagittarian. Uh, of course, it's a general reading, so the uh, specifics of how it plays out is going to vary in everyone's life, but the fundamental energy remains the same. But if you know all of your signs, sun, moon, rising, and Venus, watch them all for additional insight and perspective. If you do find that any of the videos do resonate with you and you'd like to reach out for a personal reading, maybe take a deeper look into something, you can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, I can usually respond within the same day with more information. I do offer a wide variety of readings. Uh, and I do readings full time. It's all that I do. So I'm pretty diligent about scheduling, getting those readings set up in as timely a fashion as possible. You can also get that email address, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com by clicking the description link, that little arrow below. I would be delighted to hear from you. Okay, Sagittarius, let's see what the first two weeks of April have in store for our, our lovely fire sign, Sagittarius. I am using the Tarot of Dreams and clarifying with one of the Gilded Tarot decks. Okay, Sagittarius. This deck is a little larger than the standard size deck and I have small hands, so <laughs> shuffling, I'm getting used to it. All right, we begin with the Eight of Cups. Leaving something behind, perhaps, with judgment. Pretty profound decision. Crossroads, do I, don't I? The Two of Coins, do I, don't I? With the Ten of Wands, I'm just so worn out and overwhelmed. What do I do? The Seven of Coins, reflection, taking inventory, taking stock. You've put a lot of effort into it. What do I do from here on out? The Six of Coins, giving, receiving. Is it worth continuing? Should I continue to invest? There's like what to do and decisions all over this. From I don't think I've ever had that happen. One just flipped out on the computer. Two cards came out. So from the bottom of the deck, overall energy, the Seven of Swords. So whatever it is, you're keeping it hidden with the Two of Cups. Soulmate, kindred spirits, best friends. Could be romantic. Could be you know, best friends or some combination of the two. So there's definitely a relationship central here. And that may be what, I mean, this is very clear. Well, I mean, it's not clear in terms of what decision you're going to make, but it's very clear there's all this, all of this energy pointing to trying to make a decision to leave something behind or to continue investing in it. There's a sense of feeling overwhelmed and tired with the Ten of Wands here, a heavy burden. What do I do? So this implies that if it's about a relationship, it's probably a long-standing relationship. The Two of Cups is that karmic connection. We don't start off feeling this overwhelmed. We start off with the Ace and we go all the way through all the numbers to the Ten. So something that's been going on for some time and it needs to come to an end. Tens represent cycle completion. This burden has got to be laid down. How do I do that? What's the best decision to make in order to... to what's the best decision to make to alleviate this feeling here? Um, it's a pretty profound crossroads decision. It's probably going to be a final one, meaning that whatever you choose, that's probably what you're going to be stuck with for a while. Well, not stuck. So you better make sure you make the right decision possible. We do have the Eight of Cups with judgment here. The Eight of Cups is the card of turning your back, leaving and walking away what these Eight Cups represent. 
In this particular deck, the Tarot of Dreams, all of the eight cups are upright. In other decks, some of them are tipped over and spilled out. The implication being that even at the beginning, you may have thought that, you know, what was in these cups is going to be what you needed and wanted and nourish you, but you've made your decision to turn your back and walk away and go in a different direction, even if you don't know which direction, um, because it's not really what you find joyful or fulfilling. In the card after this, of course, is the Nine of Cups, which is finding what you want. Your cups are overflowing with abundance. So here in the Eight of Cups, you're turning your back and walking away because you want to go in search of what your true joy and fulfillment is. Underneath that Eight of Cups, we have judgment, profound crossroads. You're being called to act, but which decision are you going to make? There's an air of finality about judgment. So it means that whatever you choose, you're not going to be able to unchoose it or reverse it, typically. Um, so choose carefully. It's also it can be a card of second chances. Um, so I think if you make the decision to leave and walk away, you're not going to be able to go back even if you wanted to. If you make the decision to stay, that's probably the decision you're going to be living, you know, for the rest of whatever, uh, for quite some time, if not forever. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Should I continue? I've invested a lot in this already. Should I continue to? Should I make the offer, you know, invest more in this? Because I'm feeling just kind of overwhelmed. It might be about a relationship. But, it, you know, you're keeping it all to yourself here with the Seven of Swords as overall energy. Secrecy, concealment, keeping it to yourself. About a relationship. Unless you're already in a relationship and you're considering leaving this one for someone you feel is your soulmate i'm not getting too much third party energy really off of this though but it might be for some of you what do i do about a relationship is really quite clear here let's clarify a little bit let's clarify that seven of swords and two of cups clarified by the two of cups definitely soulmate karmic energy i mean this is your person whether or not you leave this person or not free will free agency right but this is obviously your person there's obviously a strong karmic connection here justice the right thing what is the right thing to do the eight of cups again leaving walking away so the decision is about walking away from this person that there's a karmic connection with now just because there's a karmic connection doesn't mean that you're meant to stay with them for the rest of your life you can do what you want free will regardless of what spirit suggests you should do ultimately the decision is up to you um, the thing with the karmic connections like this two of cups and the twin flames is you know their energy in some way shape or form remains with you for the rest of your life and and often even if it's after a long period of time your paths somehow end up crossing again because it's that karmic connection there's lessons meant to be learned here right so you're trying to figure out should i leave is leaving the right thing to do what is the right thing to do here because justice and judgment both is the you know justice is the reap what you sow card meaning that you know, the outcome is based on not what you intend or wish or dream or hope, but what you actually choose and do, right? So what's the right thing to do here? Again, we're right back to the same thing. What do I do? Let's clarify the Ten of Wands, this feeling of being so overwhelmed. What's behind that? Clarify the Ten of Wands. The Five of Wands, petty conflict, circular arguing, arguing over the same thing over and over again, everybody wanting to be right, everybody wanting to be heard, nobody wanting to back down or elevate, it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. Six of Cups is a card associated with historical connections. Soulmate, I mean, it could be, I mean, it could be for some of you romantic, it could be a best friend, like a super close best friend. Ten of Swords, betrayal, feeling stabbed in the back, exploited, kicked under the bus. For some of you, if this is a romantic coupleship, um, because of the sense of betrayal, it might be, and the Six of Cups, it might be that they or you, somewhere in the past, um, maybe there was a, a infidelity or cheating, um, you know, maybe there was a breach of trust in the past, and, you know, because of that, even though you'd made the decision to stay together, there's still insecurity and fear and suspicion and mistrust, and it always, every fight kind of circles back down to the same thing again, you know. Um, like it won't, somebody won't let it die, you know, 
Um, and so because of that, it just it's endless. It just keeps going on and on and on again on. And every time you fight, regardless of what starts the fight, it always ends up back down to that same thing, that breach of trust, whatever that breach of trust was. And you're just tired of it. And even though you love this person, this person loves you, there's obviously a strong karmic connection. You're like, what do I do? How do I bring this to an, you know, how do, is there a way, how, what do I do? There's a lot invested here. We have a lot. We share all this stuff and history and boxes and crates and the things and stuff. But and I love this person, but you know, I, this can't keep going on like this. What to do? Should I leave? Would leaving be the right thing? Could I ever get over it? Them? Vice versa? So I'm going to pull some advice and guidance cards. I'm not going to say which is the right decision to make because this is a pretty profound decision and you're not going to be able to reverse whatever it is you do decide. And because it's a general reading and there's so many of you watching, for some of you it might be yes, for some of you it might be no. So what I am going to ask for is advice from spirit on what you should do in order to make the best decision possible. What you should do or what you should focus on or any kind of advice. Hermit. Let's pull one more. Seven of Pentacles again. You need to go off. If it's at all, you need to go off and think about this some more. And remove yourself from direct contact with the person and the conflict just for a period of time, if at all possible, because that's what the Hermit implies. Um, I mean, Hermits, monks, monastics, people who live an ascetic life, um, you know, they withdraw and retreat, even if it's just temporary. Um, because they need to get away from the normal day-to-day -day life and noise and minutia of their normal day-to-day -day life in order to um, kind of create a quiet space so that they can think and dwell and ponder and reflect and try and use their wisdom and their life's intuition and open themselves up to spiritual guidance and, you know, in order to, to find a way through, right, to find some answers, some, some enlightenment, right, some wisdom. That's why they do that. And you can't do that when you're in the midst of a bunch of noise and people. You have to kind of go off for a little while. So if at all possible, maybe remove yourself, even if it's for a weekend, and just go off somewhere by yourself, you know, and think about things for a while, which is what the Seven of Pentacles is about. The Seven of Pentacles is somebody who's getting ready to harvest something that they put a lot of work and effort into. It's not a full crop. It's not a 10. It's a decent crop. They've invested a lot, and they're kind of stopping and taking a look and going, okay, all, for all the work that I put into this, what am I getting back out of it? Did it meet my expectations? Can it be better? Can I grow a better crop? Should I just harvest what I can and leave and do something else somewhere else? Or should I continue? Should I make some changes? Is it possible? You know, this is about getting away and seeking some insight and guidance, which on one hand, I suppose it's not all that clear, but on the other hand, it's a clear path to getting clear. Because what Spirit is saying here definitively with the Hermit card Sagittarius is that the clarity and the answer that you need and the insight and perspective that you need you're not going to get while you're in the midst of this you've got to remove yourself temporarily uh, from this situation and kind of just be off on your own for a little while and spend what free time you have really thinking about this and kind of opening yourself up to God, spirit, angels, guides, whoever it is that it's, it's the same thing, but we all call them different names, right? And opening yourself up to, you know, true insight and guidance. And what's the best thing to do here? Because I, you know, there's this karmic connection and I've invested a lot, but you know, karmic connections doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're meant to be together for the rest of your life. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. So genuinely and sincerely open yourself up to um, whatever guidance that spirit has for you okay that's the advice and guidance so Sagittarius I hope that it's been um, this reading has been helpful and useful and validating or at least giving you some food for thought um, <clears throat> Thanks again for taking the time to tune into it. Uh, and again, if there's, uh, if you'd like to reach out for a personal reading, if any of this resonated with you and you'd like to take a deeper look at something, click on the description link below for contact details. You can email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be most happy to hear from you and to work with you. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the April mid-month readings. Until then, stay safe and well, be blessed, and I hope to see you back here again soon.